everyone, and welcome back. So it's been a hot second since I've done a recipe video. And what I mean by that is back at the very beginning of this channel, I did a whole series of videos about fun lattes and coffee drinks that you can make at home that are a little extra fancy. They take a little extra time, but they're a little extra delicious. Now it's been a quick second since I've done one of those. And so I thought we'd do one today about a drink that you might've heard of because it's been making the rounds all over. But before that, I wanna give a huge thank you to the people who are sponsoring today's video. I want to give a huge shout out to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. Care Of is a company that'll help you find the perfect tailor-made combination of vitamins for you and your lifestyle. Their monthly boxes come with 30 beautifully packaged daily servings, and by the way, their packaging is compostable. And if you'd like to learn more about it, you can visit their site at takecareof.com forward slash p forward slash eco. Care Of aims to help you achieve all of your personal goals in an easy and approachable way. Now, recently I started running again, which I love doing, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot I could be doing to support my body as I ease it back into that sort of high intensity cardio. Care Of's five minute quiz helped pinpoint exactly which vitamins would help me get back into my groove. And now I'm able to take vitamin D to support bone health, fish oil to help maintain a healthy heart and iron to easily assist in my journey back into running with one pre-portioned package. Also, if I didn't mention it before, I absolutely love their packaging and it fits perfectly onto my tea cart, so I never forget about it in the morning. So if Care Of sounds like it could be the right fit for you, you're in luck because right now they're giving my viewers 50% off your first month when you click the link in the description and use code DRINKCOFFEE50. So get started today and thank you again to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. So as I mentioned before, this is a drink that has definitely been doing the rounds lately and it's actually Starbucks' latest release. This is their brown sugar shaken espresso with oat milk and that is a mouthful to say and it took me a couple times to record this segment because I kept tripping over it. Anyways, this is their grande size which comes with three pumps of their brown sugar syrup, three shots of their blonde roast and then it's shaken up, poured into the cup and then oat milk is promptly poured over it. Now, all in all, I was incredibly excited to try this drink because it sounds absolutely delicious and all of these ingredients are things that I've put in coffee previously. And yes, it was super tasty. I would describe it as being a little bit more of a sweetened, slightly cinnamony oat milk latte. I didn't get a lot of that syrupy, molassesy kind of brown sugar that I was expecting, but overall, still a very, very tasty drink. But that led me to thinking, what would I do if I made this drink and if I made it at home? So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna make our own brown sugar shaken espresso with oat milk. So let's start at the bottom because we got a couple different components here, but the first thing we have to do is make that thick syrup that's sitting at the bottom. Let's review all the ingredients we're gonna need and then let's get started. So first thing we're gonna need is molasses. I'll come back to this later as to why we'll need it, but just let's get some molasses and let's set it to the side. Next thing you're gonna need is some sort of vanilla bean paste and or extract. I really recommend paste. I think it's a lot tastier, but whatever works for you. We'll also need pure cane sugar. You can use Demerara or you can use turbinado if you really want to, but I recommend using just regular cane sugar. Then we're gonna need cinnamon of some type. Now, if you guys have watched my video making James Hoffman's pumpkin spice latte, you might remember me getting these really, really fancy different types of cinnamon. I still have them laying around. I haven't had a really good use for them, so I'm gonna use them here, but if you just wanna use regular ground cinnamon or whatever you have lying around, that is totally fine. This is absolutely not necessary. It's just a, a little extra thing I'm gonna do. Next thing you're gonna need is some sort of container that you can then seal your syrup in because we're gonna be making about a cup of it. Okay, so let's start off with making our very own brown sugar. This way you can really control the amount of molasses flavor you're gonna get into it. I'm a huge fan of brown sugar. I'm a huge fan of molasses. So I'm gonna start off with about 200 grams of cane sugar, and then I'm gonna add about 30 grams of molasses. If you're someone who prefers cups and tablespoons as your measurement, then this is gonna be one cup of cane sugar to a little bit over a tablespoon of molasses. After that, get out a fork and just start mashing it up. This will take about three to four minutes, but after that, you'll end up with something that looks roughly like this. And there you go, that's brown sugar. You just, you just did that. Now you don't have to go buy it. Anyways, this is the color I was looking for but again, you're more than welcome to adjust it based on your preferences. Now it's time to get my cinnamon all ready because as I mentioned before, I'm using whole pieces of cinnamon that I'll have to grind up using my little handy spice grinder. Now, the first thing I'm starting off with are these cassia bark pieces. And this is a much kind of brighter, spicier version of cinnamon that I really, really like. So I'm doing a two to one ratio with the regular kind of your more standard cinnamon stick. So I'm just measuring them out here and stick them in my spice grinder. If you're using regular ground cinnamon, just totally ignore this part because all I'm doing here is getting what you would then buy in the store. 
If you are for some reason like me grinding your own cinnamon at home, the only thing I would say is make sure you get it as fine and powdery as possible so it'll integrate really, really nicely into our drink and then later into our syrup as well. So I'm just gonna store it on the side in this little bowl to use and then you can put the rest of it just in any sort of spice jar you have and it's all good to go. Kind of a fun, more affordable way to get cinnamon if I'm being totally honest. So we have all of our syrup ingredients ready so I'm gonna set my stove top to about medium high heat and then dump in all that sugar we have, which is around 200, slightly over 200 grams with the added weight of the molasses and then I'm gonna follow it up with about 175 grams of water this is a little bit under a one-to-one -one ratio because I really want this syrup to be kind of as like thick and honestly for lack of a better word as syrupy as possible and then I'm just gonna keep whisking it because we don't want to caramelize this we really just want to melt down that sugar and get everything incorporated together after we start to see some melting happening I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of our cinnamon powder that we've got this is gonna add a really nice kind of like light spice to our syrup and make it a really really delicious thing that you can add to this latte of course but you can also add it to you know any sort of coffee you want and then afterwards I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of our vanilla paste this is gonna be a really really nice kind of like balancing agent for that cinnamon that brown sugar and really like round out the flavors of this syrup a neat little trick to know if all your sugar is melted is to tilt the pan and if you don't see any granules of sugar sticking to the bottom you're probably good to go so I'm gonna turn off the heat and then just set this back here to cool slightly before transferring it to my actual storage container and now with the power of editing it is cool and time to transfer I have I highly recommend using a funnel for this because this is not the type of syrup that you want to get on the floor because not not that I know but it will stay on the floor forever and be very very sticky and you will regret every single moment of stepping in it with your new socks so you got it in the container and now you can just stick it in the fridge and wait to use it now let's move on to the next thing which is gonna be our oat milk and I'm gonna do something slightly different than what Starbucks does so we're gonna need a pitcher we're gonna need about eight ounces of cold oat milk of your preference then we're also gonna need that cinnamon that we were using earlier in the day and we will also be needing that vanilla paste that we were also using because we are reusing ingredients and keeping this as simple as possible even though it's definitely not simple so this next thing is going to be slightly different from the Starbucks version because at Starbucks they just poured their oat milk over the shaken espresso and that was the drink but I thought it would be fun to add kind of a different textural element to it so we're gonna be making a spiced oat milk cold foam if you will so we've got our eight ounces of cold oat milk I'm gonna be adding a little splash of that cinnamon I'm also gonna be adding a splash of vanilla and a tiny bit of sugar this is gonna make some Something that is super super delicious and can sit on top of the drink and add a really really nice fluffiness to it that I think was kind of missing from the original drink that made it seem honestly just more like a latte and in the original Starbucks drink they didn't strain their espresso it's just poured from the shaker into the cup but I found that that didn't add the texture that I was looking for so we will be straining our espresso from the shaker and then we will be adding our cold foam on top if that makes sense now when it comes to construction I'm basically gonna be treating this like a cocktail because I don't know that seemed like the most fun to me so I got all these fancy things like this really nice cup that I definitely just bought because you can see the price tag on the bottom and then I also have this shaker now as I mentioned before we are gonna be straining our espresso so if your shaker does not have a built-in strainer to it like this one does you'll probably want to have some sort of strainer on the side this has a really nice large chamber so we'll have plenty of room for lots of ice lots of drink and okay I think we have everything. I think all of our ingredients. Oh, we need coffee. Yes, we do need coffee. I kind of forgot about that. So heat up your espresso machine and then go pull a double shot or a triple or however much you like. I believe in the grande size of this drink, it comes with three shots, but I'm making something that's more akin to uh, probably about a 12 ounce. So I'm just gonna use a double here. This is a really, really delicious washed coffee from Guatemala that I thought would pair really well because I didn't have any of Starbucks's blonde roast on hand. Okay, now I think we have everything. So let's review. We have our brown sugar syrup here and we have a whole lot of it in fact we have our spiced oat milk that is already here and don't worry about that we'll just clean it up but we are going to be whipping this into a cold foam of sorts after that we have our double shot of espresso and then we have all of our tools which we're going to have our measuring tool we have our cup we have our shaker and then I have a hand frother from Bodum which is going to work perfectly for this so the first thing you're going to want to do is fill up your shaker about halfway full with a bunch of ice cubes leaving lots of room left for your drink and then after that you might as well just add Add your ice to your serving glass I had these very very large ice cubes and since we're being kind of fancy here I thought I might as well get some use out of them after that I'm gonna add about 30 grams of our syrup to our shaker this might seem like a lot but I really really wanted that rich syrupy flavor so we're just going for that after that put in your espresso and then it's time to shake do this very carefully make sure you keep your hand on the top and make sure it is completely sealed so you don't end up with syrup on the floor not that I did that of course it's always very clean and recipe testing always goes 
goes perfectly. Anyways, after you are all done, you are welcome to just strain it over the ice you have in your serving glass. I came out with about 8 to 10 ounces of this, which was perfect because then the rest of the cup was left over for my cold foam, which we're going to get ready now after we, of course, clean up any messes we have. So get your frother out and then just immediately start frothing your milk. Pull in a good amount of air and then dunk it under to incorporate that air into the rest of the milk like you would if your milk was hot. But remember, this is cold foam. Your milk is cold. You don't need to heat this up at all. And then after that, just pour it right on top. Because of how much air you've integrated into it, it should float very, very nicely and create this beautiful kind of like layered very very nicely textured milk drink and then afterwards just for garnish just to be a little extra fancy you're gonna sprinkle on some cinnamon and there you have it this is my take on starbucks's brown sugar shaken espresso with oat milk i think this is an absolutely stunning drink it turned out super well and i think it's something that you could pretty easily make at home and wow your friends with so let's give it a taste test because even though it looks great does it actually taste good and the answer is yes. <laughs> this drink was absolutely delicious. You get a lot stronger molassesy flavor in there, which was really what I was looking for. You can definitely pinpoint that it is brown sugar and the foamed oat milk on top gives it a really, really nice texture. I also found it was delicious when you kind of mix it all up. The air that is in that oat milk still kind of stays on the top. So you do have kind of like a fluffiness still remaining at the front of your drink, but you're able to sip down your coffee a lot faster and really have a very, very nicely textured milk drink that is yes, it's akin to a latte, but I don't know, shaken espresso just sounds more fun. It sounds fancy and different and something that would be very, very beautiful. So if you'd like to try it, head down to the description because I will have the recipe and ingredients listed there. And if you make it, feel free to tag me because I'd love to see how you do it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanna give a last huge thank you to Care Of for sponsoring it today. Use code DRINKCOFFEE50 for 50% off your first month. And if you wanna check out my other socials, I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Morgan Drinks Coffee. All right, everyone, I will see you next week.